All right, Mr. Jaeger. This is a kind of kind of a coincidence here, man, because um, I have two amps here that are both tuned circuit amplifiers, like you see right here, old school tuned circuit amplifiers. Uh, this amp was built when I was just uh, three years old. 1986. Look at that. I think it's 3386. So I was only three years old when this bad boy was built. Um, it looks like it may have been part of a kit or something that was sold that people put together, I'm guessing. It says RTD 10 meter RF amp. It's a tuned circuit, stud mount, Motorola MRF 455. And this is an orange dot, so it's a pretty pretty high HFE value. But basically, Mr. Jaeger, um, his dad gave him this amplifier when he first started showing interest when he was young. And uh, it means a lot to him. He wanted it um, working and um, and wants to use it, I think, in his uh, one of his vehicles. And, uh, well, well, I've just now removed these. I remembered I needed to make a video, but, um, it was, uh, not really working well, um, when I first hooked it up. It's got a, it's just not tuned properly is what it is. These caps that was in there are actually too small. Well, one just fell <laughs> somewhere down there. But anyway, these caps are a little bit too small, the trimmers that are in there. So I'm about to put these uh, 468s in there now. And also, um, you wouldn't be able to run this amplifier the way it is because there's no RF sensing circuit to bypass the amplifier when you're, uh, when you're in receiving mode. So I'm going to have to drop a relay in here. I'm going to drop a real small 1 amp or 3 amp relay in there for you. And I'm going to have to reroute um, the wires right here and everything. So you can have a uh, sensing circuit. And I'm also going to clean this thing for you too, man. Because I know this, this amp means a lot to you. It ain't about how much something's worth. There's sentimental value. Let me take you right over here because this is a coincidence um where is it at let's see uh, I have another there it is I have another tune circuit amplifier same ordeal pretty much the guy's dad um, gave him this amplifier and uh, this does have RF sensing in it and this this uh, fellow's uh, dad passed away God rest his soul and he wants this uh, working and as you can see this bad boy right here is built a little bit better than the other one and you see it's got the proper tremors 469s so these go up there you got a lot of capacitance on the l circuits on the input and output of the uh devices i, I guess they were uh trying to hide these transistors back in the days <laughs> and uh it's got the uh relay sitting up up under there so this right here and this right here is called a pal 50 look at that just a little uh modulator I like seeing old stuff like this, man. It's really neat. Really cool. We got a 130 picofarad cap right there. And see this bad boy right here. I see a cap right here that's uh, had a cold solder joint. Look at that. That might be the only thing keeping this bad boy from working. That's a coupling cap that's, uh, let's see. Yeah, a coupling cap to sending the RF to the transistor, so that bad boy ain't going to be working without that. It'd be kind of funny if that's all that amp needs, won't it? Can't charge the fella for that. 
Alrighty. Ooh, dog! Can you believe this right here is pretty much a gift? My buddy. I got some people. This is truly a blessing that I've met in this hobby so far. <coughs> Alright. I'm going to go ahead and, um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and unhook this and go uh, clean it. Get this thing cleaned up for you. It's definitely seen some better days. It's old, man. You know? i got to go clean the copper board anyway, so I'm just going to do them both at once. And, uh, we'll get these bigger trimmers in here, which will get us a lot closer. These don't need as much capacitance as, uh, a Toshiba does on the tune circuit design like this but it definitely needs more than what a 464 can give you not too sure why those were in there like i said it's a kit you know i don't really know if the parts came with a kit or or the boards or heck somebody could have just uh etched this board out their self you never know you never know where some of this stuff comes from all right well i'll be back man we'll get this thing working as good as uh we can get it working. I'm going to add a 10 on too on the base to ground. This this is a Class C design right here and there is uh, there's there's nothing sending it. There, there's nothing grounding the base so we need to ground that base. I'm probably just going to put a uh, a 10 ohm right there to give it some resistance to ground and to ground it too as well. I could put a little choke right there too. But anyway, we'll see. I would bias it, but I know you didn't want me to really change the circuit much. You just wanted it in the box as it is, if, and so it can work for you, and you can actually use it. And uh, so we do need to add some RF sensing to it. All right, man, we'll be back. Jaykeeper said it. Bye-bye. Hey, bud. At this point, I've uh, found myself to be quite uh, frustrated with this <laughs> this amp um both of the coils were wrong they were not where they needed to be this was like 75 um uh, i've got all the math wrote right here that i had to do so i would know exactly which uh the inductance of each coil, each coil needed needed to be and on the input we're needing you know this is an estimate there around 30 megahertz so you know you can do a little bit of adjustment uh, 47.8 nano henry's 52.76 on the output the input was 75 and the output was uh around 40 something so i adjusted the coils and it still was not working for, at all and then that's when I got to thinking, you know, let me take a look at the transistor. Well, actually, before that, I said, screw it. And I went ahead and grabbed me two transformers. And I was going to just take the uh, tuned circuit out, man, and just build a broadband uh, one pill like I normally would. Because I know you want it at least working. You know what I mean? No matter what I have to do. But, uh, so there's your transistor right here, man. And the transistor is damaged. There's a transistor that was in it. Okay, and these are stud mount. Let me hook that back up just so I can show you. I ain't got my light on out here right now. And it is not reading as a transistor reading as LED or diode junctions and basically the red is not there, there, what, what's going on there's an issue from the collector to the emitter junction there's some sort of damage from the collector to the emitter junction so in a sense that's letting me know that the collector is not even able to get a full circuit it's not able to make a full circuit with ground so that's, a, that's causing the uh, transistor to not work. And that's why I'm getting about full reflect coming back to me. So, we've at least got the uh, both of the L matches done correctly. 
even though I w even if the transistor was working I would have seen that the L matches wasn't exactly where they needed to be so at least we got them where they needed to be I'm going to drop a brand new new old stock 455A I'm going to drop that in and I'm actually going to shorten those leads a little bit because that was that was not easy getting that out man and I will say I don't completely agree with the way the heat sink is done on this thing. But, um, I mean, you're looking at more labor for me to go find another heat sink that will accept a stud mount. Because this has to be stud. I mean, I, the whole board would have to be redesigned to accept a, a uh, the, the normal, I can't remember the actual size of the, uh, the 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 name of the package of a regular pill that we use to something uh i can't remember by memory but um we want to use a stud man you know without eating up so much more labor on re redesigning the board and all kinds of crazy stuff which i don't have time to do <laughs> i got a lot of work i gotta get to man this right here should have been done two or three days ago dude um well, two days to be exact. I've spent two days on this thing, on and off. There's some, you know, things I've had to get done, of course, just around, you know, shipping and stuff like that. But it's time for this to come to an end. So I'm hoping I'm going to put this transistor in here and it's going to be all good, bud. And because uh, this transistor, I've already tested. It's got an HFE value of 68 on the, um, on the Atlas right there. It's ready to rock and roll brand new old stock I like to keep some of these type transistors around just for issues like this I still got quite a few not too many maybe about 12 15 studs I got a couple 454 studs too they're just really just I'm just holding on to them for older projects like this that that are using stud mount plus I've got a couple of heat seats that accept them I might do some builds with uh, in the near future all right, let me get this new one in and get it bolted down and soldered, and let's see if we can't get this thing working now, hopefully. All right, we'll be back. All right, brother, we are finally done with this thing, and I'll tell you what, man, it's uh, it ate up a little bit more time than I expected it to, but uh, come to find out, there was two issues with the amp, but first issue was this transistor is not completely blown but it's damaged from from a base to emitter so that's why I wasn't getting basically any output out of the amplifier and uh, so once I finally got that figured out and uh, put you a brand new uh, 455 in here stud mount old school new old stock I uh, then had to start even though I got the uh, the inductors the exact inductance you know going by the actual formulas and everything I still had to play around with them a little bit I had to take about a half a wrap off the input and I think I had to take two wraps off the output and that finally finally got this box working the way it should and uh, of course as you can see I had to put a relay in there for you to uh, so you can actually use this thing with a transceiver I think I've already showed you got your on and off switch right here okay and uh, got this bad boy tuned out for you I had some uh, temporary uh, trimmers in there at first so I went ahead and uh, went with these skinny, skinnier trimmers right here because they fit in here a lot better than them fatter trimmers. And I went ahead and cleaned the box up for you too. I guess you can probably look down here and see. I probably could have cleaned it a little bit better, but, you know, it's pretty good. Because I'm telling you, man, these things are sensitive. You get in here and start moving these coils, squeeze that coil a little bit, the box can completely quit working because it's out of tune. That's why these are called tuned circuit amplifiers, man. No doubt about it. So, we got the 250 watt slug in, okay. 
we got the peak, uh, PEP uh, peak switch turned in, so we're reading PEP. Okay, we're reading the top scale where you see uh, the 5 is 50 watts, the 10 is 100. Oh, right there at 100 watts, man. PEP. This is dead key in about 25 right there. Oh, yeah. Here's your input reflect. Oh, yeah. Almost flat, man. Oh, yeah. Here's RMS. Oh, yeah. Right there about 40 to 45 watts. Actually, I think it's about 45. Oh, this now about 40, 40 or so, a little bit over 40 bird out of a single 455, man. If I got in here and played around with it a little bit more, or, or shall I say had more experience with tuned circuit amplifiers, I, I don't see why I, I wouldn't be able to get maybe 60, 20 more bird out of it or so, but uh, I'm just glad to get this thing working. For you man I know this has a lot of sentimental value to you um, I, I did the best I could I'm glad I was able to get this thing working for you this is my uh, first tune circuit amplifier repair this is an old amp and uh, the only thing I need to do now man is I need to put some stickers for you because when I when I clean the box up for you on the outside uh, the input and output came off, so I'm going to put you uh, an in and out sticker on it so you'll know which is the uh, where you plug in your coax and everything. So I'll get that done for you, man, and get the top on here. Get the top cleaned up for you. I cleaned it the best I could, man. I took SOS pad to it, man. It was dirty. It was very dirty. So this thing's ready to, ready to go, man. I guess I could straighten out that relay a little bit while I was cleaning it. I moved the relay a little bit. Let me straighten that relay out. I'm an OCD guy, man. There we go. I was cleaning right there in between that relay. All right, brother. Appreciate you being patient with me. Get this top on here, man, and get it labeled and get it get it to the mail to you. Oh, gatekeeper said it. Bye bye.